Get out. Hello tankers and tankettes. I thought it had been a while since I put up a KV4 game, so here we go. This is one from a Jingles live stream. It's actually an 8.10 patch, so it's a little while back. It's been languishing in my replays folder for a uh, I, I don't know how many months now, but it, it's time to give it its due. It's actually a really short match. The enemy team is going to collapse really hard. And that's not why this replay is interesting. This replay is interesting because it's, it's KV-4 at its finest, basically. So... Jingles and Sircon are actually going to go to the east flank, and that's the kind of preferred flank to fight on, especially for Sircon, because he knows what he's doing on that flank. Uh, there's probably more opportunities for the kinds of tanks he likes to play. However, and this is a bit risky, I'm actually going to split up. It's arguable sometimes that this is a bad idea, but other times it can be a good idea. If you're in a platoon of two, I think it is more often than not just a bad idea, but with a platoon of three, you can still have a pair of people working in concert on one flank and somebody else on another flank. The argument against it is that you're still splitting up your... Uh, your... you're still making yourself less effective by splitting up when you're in a platoon like this. But, on the other hand, it means you've got somebody on another flank that might be a really important flank that you know you can trust. And it can go either way, so it, it's hard to call in some situations, but if you're alone, if you're platooned with only one other person, then it, it's not very, it's usually not a good idea to go off on your own. So I'm going to take a really big risk here. I've got some backup, but as you can see there, it's not really, um, there's a T25-2, T150 and a KV-1S, two tier 6s and a tier 7. Also might have artillery. So in retrospect, this is actually pretty stupid. I do like to be, if I can get away with it, really aggressive on this corner, especially in something like a KV-4. Because if you've got stuff, if you've got teammates backing you up that can put fire into the stuff that uh, you're engaging, basically, then you can basically be facing off and they can be doing a lot of damage and you can dominate this flank quite easily. But I... I I was a bit too... I don't know, I just went in gung-ho. Wasn't really paying attention, apparently, to the fact that I only had two Tier 6 Heavies and a Tier 7 Tank Destroyer to back me up. And unsurprisingly, um, yeah, I am being rushed. And at this point, I maybe slightly have an inkling that I've made a major mistake. Because this is, what, four, five enemy tanks? There's very little to stop them rushing. The IS-2, I think, might be a major problem, but actually, uh, no, he's just, he attempts a shot and then just keeps on going. The Carnarvon is actually the biggest threat here. The Tiger-2 is really very cautious, all things considered, but I've already taken a couple of hits. I'm not doing very well health-wise. Uh, I'm trying to angle against this 30, but yeah, no, no, that was a big hit. So, yeah, he's kind of face-hugging me. I can barrel block him, maybe, but I actually managed to... Uh, I think he shoots my gun mantle at that. But anyway, down to 300 health. And uh, a couple of theirs are down, but still quite outnumbered. That Carnarvon's still alive. Take a hit in the rear for the Tiger 2. 41 health! Yeah, yeah, you can imagine what I was saying on TeamSpeak at this point. It was all getting a bit hectic. And that's probably why I, I missed that shot quite so badly. Anyway, the Carnarvon's trying to hit my uh, just anything. And the T-150 is going for a shot on the flank. So I'm kind of backing up to maybe try and angle against the T-150 a bit. And then I can point my nose in against the rock. And that helps my angle against the Carnarvon. But if the Tiger 2 decides to pop round, well, that's it. Game over. But the guys that are, that are back there are, are at least keeping that one Tiger 2 from advancing. And that is quite useful because now I'm I'm still alive. I don't know how. Oh my god, I thought I was so doomed, but I'm still alive. I don't understand. But on the other hand, KV4. So there's that. I think I had some incredible luck there because it was undoubtedly a really stupid thing to do. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but... The, the magical Russian KV-4 armor saved my ass so hard because I I should have been dead. I just should have been so dead, but I wasn't. I came through with 41 hit points and a 
a hell of a story to tell, basically. Unsurprisingly, that one was a steel wall. Uh, you can see, looking at the, the the enemy team there at the end, yeah, that was a proper romp for our team. We lost two people. We lost a KV-1S and a Chaffee. Their team was pretty damn bad. Um, so it wasn't really an interesting match on that score. It was more just what happened to me in my KV-4 when I did something quite stupid. Potential damage received was 5,600. Uh, <laughs> you know, honestly, it felt like more, but actually a few of those shots did pen. So, uh, yeah, 20 shots received, 10 penetrations, 10 non-pens. Some of the ones that counted as pens went into my tracks, though, obviously, because otherwise I would have been definitely dead. Um, I, I at least, I mean, my KV-4 reflexes are such at this point that the things like angling against people is... Uh, I have to be particularly flustered to forget how to do that. So I, I was still able to use my KV-4 reflexes to their best advantage, but I just put myself in such a stupid position to begin with, and it somehow still paid off. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, even if I died, we would have won that match really easily, but as it was, I just, just came through by the skin of my teeth, and you can bet the adrenaline was going for that one. Oh boy, I actually got top score somehow on the team, because I, I did the most damage of anyone on the team, somehow. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how, and the T25-2 that was back there actually came second with nearly 2,000 damage. So it was because the enemy team just collapsed so hard and so fast that there were a couple of people that got semi-decent damage, and then the rest of the damage was spread fairly evenly across the rest of the team. So Jingles and Sircon really didn't get to do that much on their flank. They just swept through so quickly that, um, yeah, and all the action was happening over on my flank, and I was just barely hanging on by the skin of my teeth. So there you go, KV-4, too strong. Uh, don't have matches like that very often, but they do occasionally happen. Um... <laughs> You can see why I like having a bit of armour. If I'd done that in an IS-3, well, I might have come through, but on the other hand, maybe not. And I can't really think of any other tier 8 heavies where that would have been possible. So, yeah, that was a bit exciting, you guys. A bit exciting. So if you liked this video, even though it's rather shorter than normal, you can hit the like button, you can leave a comment below, you can subscribe to my channel, and of course, as always, stay tuned for more. Thank <laughs> you.